The new poly shape tool is accessed at the top of the Pro Builder toolbar. It'll say new poly shape, or if you are in icon mode, you'll see the icon that looks like a poly shape with dots along the bottom. I'll keep using this tutorial in the text mode to make things a bit simpler. So by clicking on new poly shape, I enter the create poly shape mode. You'll see in the inspector that it now shows PB poly shape and that it's, set, it's asking you to click and add points. So clicking anywhere in the scene, I can begin placing those points as many as I'd like. And then to complete the shape, either hit spacebar on the keyboard or enter or click back on the original point. And now you are in the extrude mode. So I can move the mouse up and down to set the height. I can also go downward through the shape if you need to. And when I click again, I've now committed the shape and I can continue editing or exit editing. To continue, just click anywhere on the shape's edge to add new points. You can click and drag to move them. You can click to select a point and hit backspace to remove a point if you'd like to uh, remove it from the shape. And I can click on the center green dot to edit the extrusion amount. You can also edit this directly, typing in a value in the inspector, for example 3.5 I'd like. You can also click the flip normals toggle to flip the normals on the object. Once finished, click back on the editing poly shape button to exit the poly editing and now you have your shape. So with a poly shape, you can edit it just like any other shape. Moving to the vertex, edge, or face modes in Pro Builder, I can use all the same controls. just like a regular ProBuilder object. However, once you have edited the item, if you return to editing the original poly shape, you'll lose those element edits. However, if you do this by accident, no worries, just hit Control Z and you'll be able to move back and undo. You can also create new poly shapes onto existing surfaces instead of just the ground plane. So if I click on new poly shape and then click on a surface here, you can see that it is creating it right on that surface. This is probably one of the best uses of the new poly shape tool. It allows you to quickly add detail onto items. Next, let's take a look at using the new poly shape tool with Pro Grids. So I'm going to remove each of these items. If any item is still in the editing poly shape uh, mode, so you're editing it, you can quickly exit that by hitting escape versus reaching over and clicking on the button in the inspector, hitting escape is a little quicker. So let's look at creating a new shape and using the grid. I'm going to turn on Pro Grids. I have it set to a value of one, which you can see here with the green grid on the ground. And now when I click on New Poly Shape and begin creating, you'll see that no matter where I click, it's snapping the points to the grid. So this is useful if you're creating something a bit more uh, precise or ordered, or architectural maybe. And once again, hit spacebar or click the final point, or the original. And now it's going to extrude also using the grid. So here's my new shape aligned to the grid. When I move points, once again, they'll stick to the grid and adding new points also will do the same. Getting a bit more complicated, if I were to add a new shape, a new poly shape onto the side of this object, for example this surface here, we can see that because of its angle it's not, uh, or we can't create any points that are actually on the grid here. So what the new poly shape tool will do is it starts a new local grid wherever you first click. For example, if I click here and now continue clicking, you'll see that it actually has created its own local grid and is not using the world grid which would cause a uh, cause the points to look skewed and, and not work very well. And again, it's extruding on its own local grid. So while this isn't aligned to the world grid because that would be impossible, it has its own and you still get the benefits of grid snapping. You'll notice I can move this around and it knows that it's not on the world grid even though ProGrids is turned on. I'm just going to keep that in mind and it won't snap, which again would cause problems. However, once I've moved to that, the points are still on their own local grid, so they're not going to be suddenly offset as I'm moving them around. So this is really handy. You kind of get the best of both worlds, um, 
a local grid in this case, and everything is still very nicely aligned. And that's the current PolyShape tool. So please keep in mind that this is a very new feature for ProBuilder and will probably change if you are using it. Make sure you're watching the latest video by going to the documentation or website at Procore3D.com slash docs slash ProBuilder or just Procore3D.com to see the general site. Thanks for watching and please keep looking through the docs. There's lots of good info there.